providing the need for your family. You know, I've seen a lot of customers today, they get so lazy. A lot of the work, I mean, a lot of the wives work double jobs, sometimes triple jobs, which is not right. The husband must be the first one to take the major responsibility in their marriage relationship. And then to talk to them about priority. The third major pillar to make every marriage relationship fulfilling, successful. A couple must know their priority. Aside from God, of course, our high, highest, the highest priority is God. It is no longer your family. Because the Bible says when a couple decided to get married, they would leave their parents and sing to one another. Every parent must realize that, you know, they're not there to intrude, to make a decision on their behalf, but rather as a support. But the final decision rests on the couple. So, couple, you must see the importance of prioritizing your wife or your husband. Your own family is no longer your parent. Although we love our parents, they're important to us, but your priority is one another. It's no longer your friends. Friends are important, we should keep them, but it's no longer your friends. When friends get in the way, you must prioritize your wife. Because the day you decided to get married, you change your priority in life. Not only your hobbies. Some people like to go out shopping for a lady, a woman. Of course, you know there's really nothing wrong with those hobbies. For the husband, maybe they like playing basketball, tennis, whatever hobbies they have. When your wife needs you, when your husband needs you, you have to be there for them. It's not your job. You know, a lot of marriages are breaking up because a lot of wife or husband did not know their priority. So your priority, and just repeat them, it's your family, your friends, it's your hobbies, not even your job, but your wife, your spouse, and your own family. Lastly, financially, you know, one of the major issues is finance. finance. You know, you should be able to handle your financial expenses well. Every couple must know how to handle their money wisely. They should agree who will be doing the budget, and the one who should handle the budget is the one who knows how to budget. If you have something to budget. Okay? And how will you decide your spending habits? It's very important. Lastly, let me look at pictures and I'm done. It says here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, all the way to verse 33, if I have some more time. It says here, wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. Why? For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. You know, this word submit is not, you know, being subservient even to the point of committing wrong, comp compromising what is right. The word submit simply means be agreeable. You know, I want you to know that once you decided to get married, you must realize that you are deciding to live forever with a person who is completely different from you. And those differences must be well laid out and sorted out and be able to work it out for the common good. That's why, you know, when the couple live together, they are so surprised and say, did I make the wrong decision? You know, you used to be in love. You know, before you decided to get married, you were just like in cloud nine, 
You can't wait to see other. You're careful in your words. You're careful in your action. You're careful in your reaction and behavior. And suddenly, when you begin to live together, things begin to come out. Those differences. But the Bible says, regardless of what differences is, if the wife wants to keep that marriage healthy and successful, Paul says, wife, be agreeable to your own husband. You know, I know a couple who have been married for five years, and there's only one major argument they have, which for me, it sounds so unreasonable. They both grew up in two different countries. Every time they have the supper or dinner, the husband wants the saucer on the right side, and the wife wants the saucer to be on the left side. And so that is, that became their constant conflict and argument to the point of one day, they both, they both decided to separate. You know, I just don't want to embarrass this man. I said, you know what? If your wife wants the saucer on your head, put it on your head. Amen. <laughs> you know, just to keep the memory together and the family together. Right on, right. <laughs> so, you know, those are just the minor things. You know, there's a lot of differences. The way you feel sometimes you're, you're so surprised that your wife slipped ahead of you and actually realize you heard your wife snoring like, I don't even want to describe. And you said, me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why be agreeable? You must be wise that when you come to the point of disagreeing, you have to pause and say, what did the Lord say concerning the wife when it comes in disagreement? Well, the Apostle Paul says, Wife, be agreeable to your own husband. But of course, you know, we're, we're kind of nailing down the, uh, the, the wife here first. Ladies first, isn't it? You know that, right? Ladies first, okay? And it says here, on verse 25, let me just cut it down, okay? Now let's go to the husband. You know, the husband says, you know, while well, I was talking to the wife, that he says, yes. They want to score. But for the husband, it says here, Husband, love your wife. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. That's the word giving. It sounds like a priority. You know, you should really prioritize your wife. You know, if you will take the definition of the word, can I just tell you this? Many of you doesn't know the meaning of the word love. You know, a lot of people say love is many splendor things, love is whatever. They don't even know, of course, those definitions are all good, but the Bible says there is actually a defining definition about what love is all about. The Bible says love doesn't be good. So if the husband loves their wife, they should not be behaving rudely toward their wife. Amen. Can all the way can all the wives say amen here? Yes. Okay. And then it says that love doesn't hurt. You know, you don't hurt the feelings of your wife. Before you say the word, before you do something, make sure you think, will it hurt the feelings of my wife? You know, you if you have a Bible, if you don't, go buy one. When you go home, open it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We don't have much time to talk about all these things. But go there and read it, and you will know how God defined what love is all about. But love, the Bible says, He said, all the law hangs in this one word, love. God above all things, and love your neighbor. Do you know that Cherith and Chris are neighbor? <laughs> in the Philippines. And of course, neighbor is not just only someone living beside your house or next to your house. It's someone different from me. Okay? So husband, love your wife, just ask Christ.